of them Ismian guys, y'all ready to go fight? They said, yes. And off they went. And Caleb probably said the same thing David did. He told Goliath, you come with your spear and your, and your shield. And a man, a little man, carried his shield. Goliath didn't carry his shield, Andy. Oh, no. A man, a, a servant, carried the shield. Things so heavy, took a man to hold it up. And Goliath, all nine feet of him would crouch over low, and the man would lift the shield up and hide him. That nine foot giant. And what he would do, Andy, he'd come up behind, he'd come up to face his enemy behind that shield. And they would think, oh, well, there must be a group back there, so come on, fellas, gather around. You, you take that side, anybody coming out that side, you whoop them, anybody coming, you take care of them. And then this monstrosity would stand up and scare the daylights out of them and kill them all and feed them to the, to the wild dog. Amen. But David told him, you come with your spear and your shield and your reputation of being a bad boy. But David said, you know what? I come in the name of the Lord of hosts. Amen. The Lord of the host of these people back here and the host of angels. And David wasn't scared at all. As he was walking towards that shield, he couldn't see none. David picked up five smooth stones. One for Goliath, four for his brothers. Had they been behind that thing? And David put that rock in that sea and that spear sling and began to, these guys, he, 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 man, the Israelite men were good with those slings. He was just waiting for them to pop up. When he popped up, David let fly. Right there and knocked him out, took his sword, chopped his head off, dragged that big head and gave it to King Saul. Mm -hmm. Along with the sword. Amen. And that was the story behind that, that thing with the Goliath's family. But I want to get quickly to, to um, Galatians. Amen. So the Gauls, the, the Galatians, after they were taught the gospel, saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. speaking in tongues, baptized in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, by the way, I don't care where the doctrine comes from. I don't care who teaches it. And there's a lot of stuff out in the world. Don't you let nobody turn you away from the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Repentance. Yes. Baptism in the name of the Lord. Jesus Christ, the necessity and the need to receive the Holy Ghost All right. with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues. Don't ever leave that doctrine. Amen. Because Jesus gave it to the apostles and he, he commanded them to teach it to all men. Amen. And he gave it to us in the book. Yes. So, let me roll the law real quick. The commandments, as it was broke down in Deuteronomy, they explained and put forth the righteous will of God in all matters concerning righteousness. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not do this. Thou shalt not do that. Thou shalt keep the Sabbath holy. Amen. God's righteous commandments concerning man's relationship with man and man's relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Alright? And then the the, or, the ordinances or judgments was about Israeli civil life, mm -hmm. contract law, Andy, marriage law, how to execute, how to transfer land, all that stuff, all about normal everyday activity. Because our day like now, buying cars, opening bank accounts, all that stuff, the law concerning civil life in Israel. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because God was in all aspects of their life. Guess what? As a saint of God, there should not be one aspect of your life in which God is not in. All right. Amen. Because what did Jesus say? To show you, he, he gave us the royal law. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength, and thy neighbor as thyself. Can you see it? All aspects of your life. Your heart, mind, soul, strength, and your civil life with people. You gotta love your neighbor. And if one of your neighbors turn mean and become your enemy, the Lord said, Oh, you can go get your nine millimeter and cap him through the head. Is that what Jesus said? Uh uh. He said, Love your enemy. Amen. Amen. It's time. Amen. He said, Love your enemy. So we have to do it. So, commandments taught the righteous will of God. The or the, the the judgments or the, yeah the judgments or the statute they taught civil interaction man with man woman with woman and then the ordinances taught how when we 
or the Israelites, I'm not we because we run under law. When the Israelites broke God's commandments, God had a requirement of a certain type of offering that they had to bring to the priest. And it couldn't be anything, Andy, that you run out into the herd and grab, and you got a floppy ear and a broke tail. Oh, come on here, you, you, you do. Oh, no, God was specific. God said, you will bring me that offering, but it will be without spot and without blemish. So, Andy, if he had a broke tail, disqualified. If he had a crooked hoof, disqualified. Amen. You know what that's significant of? The righteousness and holiness of God. Amen. It cannot be tweaked All right. to satisfy us. All right. We got to satisfy God's righteousness. Mm -hmm. We got to satisfy his holiness. We can't say, okay, God, this is the best I can come up with. So there it is. You have to take it or leave it. Amen. Not so, not so. Because the Lord said when he's come back for his church, he's coming, watch this, watch this again. When he comes back for his church, he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. And it, we can't tweak it. We can't say, oh, that's just a little dust, Lord. Can you accept that pretty please? Uh-uh. If God can see it, you need to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Because when he comes, his all seeing eye is going to see everything. But someone get that in hand, that Close to me, please. So, so the Gauls, they they let the Judaizing teachers, yeah. the Christian Jewish brethren who wanted to hold on to the law, come in and give them the law. They mixed it, they added to it uh, new moons, all the different kinds of ceremonies under the law. And they said that, they said keeping the law along with being baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. All that together justified you. Paul's argument was, no, no, wait a minute, folks. Let's analyze this. When did the Abrahamic covenant begin? And I'll tell you when, without even thinking of years. 12th chapter of Genesis, when the Lord said to Abram, who later changed his name to Abraham, if you will come out from your daddy's house, away from the control of your community and your traditions mm -hmm. and follow my voice on this trip through the wilderness to a new land, I'm going to give you certain blessings. First of all, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name famous. I'm going to give you a seed. A people is going to come out of you. You shall become the father of many nations. And he went on to say, and I'm going to give you a land. He didn't tell him what land or how much, but later on in Genesis 15, chapter 17, chapter 19, chapter 2, God specified everything he was going to give him, how many children he was going to have, even before the first boy was born. God told him all of this. And God one day told Abraham, come out. I want to show you what your, 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 your heritage will look like. Mm -hmm. God said, look at the sands of the sea. And God's daylight. Look at the sands on this beach. Can you count them, amen? Amen. said, no, Lord. He said, I live now. And then he must have stayed out there for a while. Or as it was still light enough for him to see the sand, but yet dark enough for him to see the stars. It must have been that case. Because the Lord immediately told him, now look heavenward. heavenward. See all those stars up there? This is going to be your natural, natural posterity. Those heavenly stars, that's going to be your spiritual posterity. He said, can you count those stars up there, Abraham? Abraham said, no. He said, all right. And the Bible say, Abraham, believe God. How many of you do? Nothing that happened, saints of God. He didn't have not one inkling when his son was coming. But he believed God. And God said, yes. He accounted it unto righteousness. He looked at Abraham's record and took his righteousness and put over here and stamped it on his record. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So if we obey the Lord today, and I got to quit, if we obey the Lord today, every time you obey God, every time you believe him and walk according to his word, and as, as best of obedience as you can, seeking to be perfect before God, you don't need to add nothing to it, brothers and sisters. You will be accredited. The righteousness of, of Jesus Christ will be accredited to your account. So Andy, you and I, we don't have no righteousness. Our righteousness come through right. obedience. Mm -hmm. And it comes from the one who saved us. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. That's why when you walk in obedience, yes. you, you know, this is not a license for us to sin, but we will occasionally sin. It's, it's going to happen. 
You don't have to practice it. It's just going to happen. So don't start practicing and say, Pastor Robinson saying, we're going to sin, so I'm going to go ahead and help him along with that. Oh, no, because uh -huh. that's willful. Mm -hmm. And God going to write that down, that you are willfully sinning. Mm -hmm. And then God going to turn you over to a reprobate mind. Mm -hmm. But you're walking, and something happened, and you, you sin. When you turn to God and fall on your knees in repentance, and just like that Israelite when he brought that correct offering to God for the sin he committed, and the priest, he took it to the brazen altar, and he told the priest, he confessed to the priest what the sin was, and the priest looked at the altar and said, yes, appropriate offering. Then the priest did something. The priest took the hand of the confessor and took the hands of the confessor and put him, brought him to the head of that beast and put his hand on that beast. Oh, yeah. And the priest put his hand on that beast. Yeah. And they prayed. Yeah. And that person repented, repented on that beast. Yes. And God transferred the sins of that individual to that beast. Yes. Uh, watch yes. God work. Watch God work. He did the same with his son Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. When Jesus was hung on the cross, the law said, Cursed is he that hangs on a tree. tree. Hallelujah. Oh, look at God. Look, watch God. All of our sin have been transferred to Jesus Christ. All, right, all, right. all we got to do is walk in faith. And God will transfer, take our sins away, transfer the righteousness of Christ to us. Amen. And when he come and we are found in that manner, yes. walking before him in the simplicity of the gospel, not adding anything to it. What you think can be added. What you feel cannot be added. Mm -hmm. Your understanding don't amount to anything. It's all God's gospel. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And we have to walk by it. I want to say what the Lord said to Abraham when we were going home. God commanded Abraham after he knew Abraham was going to be a, more than a friend of God, was going to be obedient to God all the days of his life, except for his sins when he was in the wilderness. And God told him to go to the rock. And, and, uh, and, um, and that was Moses. God told Moses to go to the rock. And, uh, and uh, Abraham failed. So let's read Moses. Out. Abraham failed. What were some of his failures? One of them was a failure of faith when he was down in in, uh, in the Philistine country and the king saw him with uh, with his wife Sarah and he thought that those Philistines, because Sarah was such a beautiful woman, he, he introduced to this king and to the people to the this is my sister. And then the, the king was watching them one day. And you know how it is, Andy, when you when you and your wife are close and you're loving each other, you're gonna reach over and touch it, she gonna playfully touch it back. And you're gonna reach over and pinch it or pat her. You know, she's going to swing at you, you know. And then while you get close to her, you go cuddling in your arm. And the king would go, huh? That ain't his sister. <laughs> and the king got mad because the king had plans for her. The king was going to take her and add her to his harem. Mm -hmm. And was going to give Abraham another woman because he had power to do so. And that was not what God wanted because then Isaac would not have come out of Sarah. Some Philistine would have come out of Sarah. And God would not have his plan messed up. That's right. So God let the king see it. And he got so mad at Abraham. He said, oh, okay, you, you, here, here, take some stuff. You came down here because of, I think it was a, a, a famine or something. Here, take some stuff. We'll give you some food. Now, scat, scat, shoot, shoot. You man, you'll mess me up. Get out of here. He put him out. Of the land of, Philist of the Philistines. Because he had ideas. He was eyeballing Sarah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that pretty girl. Oh, yeah. <coughs> he had plans. But God cut that off. He showed that Abraham lied. So Abraham lied. He had a lot of faith. Abraham failed several times. But he always got it right. He was yes. like David. Yes. He got it right Amen. with God. And God counted unto him as faithfulness and righteousness. And he named Abraham the father of the faith. Out of him come all that we now enjoy. The church, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Mm. So brothers and sisters, stick with this gospel. Amen. It's the only way we can be saved. Amen. There is no other no gospel. Other. No there other. is no other way. Amen. Amen. The gospel of Jesus Christ is it. Mm -hmm. He is the last. Uh, he, is the la he is the final Adam. The first Adam failed, went into sin, and God had to save us, all of us as his children. He is the second Adam who stayed with the will of God Amen. and has a name that's above all names. Everybody standing. Amen. He has a name above all names. Amen. Clap your hands for God. Amen.
Name of the Lord.